I am Roman numeral three. No, Arabic number three. If you're new to my channel, thanks for coming. If you've seen my other videos, thanks for watching. Either way, I appreciate you. Warning, don't try anything I do without taking proper precautions. Protect your skin, eyes, and lungs. In the Brass Copper Zinc and Acid series, I've been collecting sediment in every episode. It's in the Petri dish, and I think it's silver. Hey, wait, three. What makes you think it's silver? And why would silver be in there anyway? There's not much silver left in that ore. Let's get the copper and zinc out and sell it. Understand? Okay, okay boss. boss. So that could explain the how. The why, I think, is because of pickles. Three, are you dissolving stuff in acid? Or are you eating lysergic diethylamide? It's diethylamide. And no, I'm not taking it. So yeah, pickles. Because when jewelers work with silver or gold, they have what they call a pickle jar. The jar contains an acidic solvent, and sometimes acetic acid or vinegar is used, hence the name pickle jar. This is a piece of gold ore. In ores that contain silver, it's also common to find copper and zinc. That's how some could be in there. When I work with silver, I use acetic acid as my pickle. And over the last month or so, this is the sediment that came out of the pickle. This is a collection from several small batches. So we'll get a weight on it. Of course I'm outside and the wind decides to start blowing, so it's hard to be super accurate, but it looks like about eight and a half grams. So we have the fire brick set up here with the small crucible. And we'll get that powder into the small crucible. And here's a bag of borax that we'll use for flux. I feel like a golf announcer. He steps up to the tee and checks the wind and then he carefully loads the powder into the crucible i could have been more careful and i know it probably looks like i wasted a lot but i got most of it in there and what i lost was micrograms And now it's time to add the flux. If it looks like I'm using a lot of borax here, you're right. This is a powdered substance, so I'm trying to use the extra flux to get it to ball up once it gets melted. <laughs> yeah, he, he said ball up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, ball up. <laughs> yeah, ball up. Um, okay. Also, I don't expect this powder to be pure silver. The flux will also help impurities get stuck in the flux instead of in the silver. You get to take a look inside the cold furnace while I load the crucible in. It gets used an awful lot and the crucible is sitting on top of two aluminum oxide blocks. So I'll tell you a little bit about my setup here. I always keep the gas tank on the right hand side because that's where the burner comes into the furnace. Everything that could get hot goes to the left of the furnace. I always keep my favorite gray five gallon bucket to the left hand side full of water for quenching and for emergencies. The gas hose is the reason why all the hot stuff goes to the left because one touch with an 1100 degrees Celsius crucible and that thing will have a leak. Before I start to melt, I like to move things that could get broken or melted like the plastic baggie full of borax and the Petri dish, the larger crucible should be okay, but I try to get that out of the way to where I won't kick it. When I started this channel, I decided to focus on these 12 metals first. I presented the reactivity series already. I also made a list of these 12 metals melting points in order. It seems like I should mention gloves since I said I would talk about safety. I don't wear gloves when I work with the furnace. I have a pair here and they're off camera, but really they're more for when things cool down. They're really good up to about 400 degrees, but then after that, they tend to burn on your hands. So if you pick up something that's, you know, more than 700 degrees Fahrenheit, 
or a thousand degrees Celsius, it actually burns your skin through the gloves and it takes longer because you have to take them off. The stainless steel tongs that I use do not conduct heat. So they don't even get hot. They're very safe. Of course, just because they don't conduct heat, you don't want to touch the business end after you've handled a crucible with them. I'll break out my infrared thermometer for this melt, just so you can see how hot the furnace gets, and so I can get some good readings. Sorry, Mr. Fahrenheit. For this one, we're gonna go with Celsius. the mold and the 1120 was inside the furnace. I like to put my crucibles back in the furnace and let them cool with the furnace while it's off. I think it helps them last longer in my experience maybe. So it's about 4.7 grams. That's a little bit less than I expected. So we'll clean it up and test it. This is the Schwerter test, the red test with potassium dichromate and nitric acid. This is the JSP brand. So on the right side, this is the piece that I just poured. And then this is my sample piece that's I know for sure 999 pure silver. This is an acidic test, that's why the baking soda and water is there on the right. We'll use that in case we have a spill and to clean up the stone. By the way, don't wear nitrile gloves with this. It contains nitric acid. Nitric acid will burn nitrile gloves. At first glance, this orange color 
means that it does have silver in it. However, it doesn't mean that it's pure silver because the red on the left is what pure silver looks like. I would not sell this as sterling without proof that it's at least 92.5%. In the follow-up video to the can melting video, we weighed the gas tank and it weighed 23.3 pounds. And at the end of this melt, it weighed 23.1, so we used 0.2 pounds. If you watch the follow-up to the can melt, you know that I'm paying about $1.70 a pound for propane. So at 0.2, it cost me about 35 cents. The silver price today is $23.73. The gram price is 76.3 cents. If our little 4.7 gram piece was 9.99 fine, it would be 3.58. If it was sterling, it would be 3.32. If it was 900 or coin silver, it would be 322. If it was 800, it would be 286. And $1.79 if it's only 50% pure. And this is the sterling price. I'm pretty sure that it's between 800 and sterling. The end.